Yes. So first of all, we are going to look at uh, the definition of simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion basically is defined by two points. Okay, let's write some initialism. It is the to and fro motion of an object number one where the acceleration is always towards wait a second. Okay, towards the mean position and the second mark you're going to get is when you write the magnitude of acceleration is directly proportional to the magnitude of displacement. Okay. Now what it means is that suppose there's an oscillating body. in three different positions. So naturally a body could be like, you know, this. So right now you could see that this is its original length. Okay, let's call this L naught. And then if it's going up and down, so either it could like compress itself and it's going up or it could extend like this, all right? And it's going down. Okay, now, in both the situations, what I want to tell you is that this position from which you're taking the reference line is your mean position. A lot of people like to call it equilibrium. but that's absolutely fine. And if you notice that when the displacement is like upwards, suppose let's call this positive displacement. So the body wants to return back to its equilibrium point. So the acceleration is downwards of the same magnitude, by the way. Proportional magnitude. And similarly, like if it goes down, suppose with the negative displacement, then the acceleration will go up because it wants to return to its original shape. If it's negative, it is positive. So two things you guys need to remember, that not only the direction is the same, but also the direction is opposite, but the magnitude increases or decreases the, uh, proportionally. So, Yes. Bro, I sent the link. Many of school page the hair A to be group missing. Tell him to join. Acha. Okay. Wait a sec.
Okay. So now, um, speaking of this, then what you need to understand is that when it says the simple harmonic motion, it's that the magnitude of A All right, sorry, I'm, I'm very sorry for uh, all this. So the magnitude of A is proportional to negative X. Now, why am I saying this? Because one, that the magnitude is proportional, but the negative sign shows the opposite direction. So if you want to write, that's also good. That basically negative shows um, they will be in, in opposite directions. Now, when you remove this proportionality sign, you're going to end up with introducing omega square. So in this, I just want to tell you that A is the acceleration. This is the angular frequency, all right? or angular speed, whatever you want to call this. And this is the displacement. Like that, please. All right. Now, let me know if you have a question here. Sir, I joined a bit late. Could you explain the diagram again, if you can? Yes. So what I've written, all right. So I've written that acceleration is always towards the mean position, right? First of all, what, what it means is that if this is the mean position where it rests naturally, right? So either if it's vertically oscillating, either it can go up or down, right? So we can say it is compressed or extending, which means that when it has compressed, the acceleration is directed towards the mean. As you can see, it's downwards, right? Yeah. And when it has extended, the same acceleration is directed upwards, as you can see, because it's always towards the mean position. Understood? Oh, okay, sir. And the reason is that when you displace something to a certain distance, like, or displacement, like if you make it go up, the acceleration wants it to come back or retain its original shape. Do you understand? Right, sir. Yeah, okay. So no matter what, these two will always be in opposite directions. Okay? Now, as the magnitude of displacement increases, so does the magnitude of acceleration. Do you get my point? So, right. obviously, if you you know, compress something really far, it's going to come back really fast because as you're increasing the displacement, you're also increasing its ability to apply a restoring force. Understood? That causes acceleration. That's what I basically explained. Them. Right. All right. Now, before... So what I want you guys to understand is before we go into um, any details, there are certain things that you should remember. And although this is basically from math, but it's uh, sort of, you know, required for you to know because ultimately it's going to, you know, be useful to you uh, to solve questions quite quickly. So I'm going to make a table. In fact, I'm going to make three tables and I'm going to explain this these maths rules to you. Those who already take maths as their subject in A-levels, they would probably know this already. So I'm going to get a bit bored, but it's all right. Sir, I don't take maths. Then you, won't, like... then you won't be bored. You will have something new to learn. Anyway, so speaking of, uh, yeah, all right. So first of all, uh, suppose you write a function of y. A function of y means like I can write y equals to x, something like that, right? So, and then you derivate them. 
derivation basically is dy by dx. What does that mean? Sir, uh, sir, I think I know this. It's like the gradient of the graph, I believe. But yeah, yeah. The, the change is like in press of d. Yeah. D, the symbol d is the same as you write change in y over change in x. This is just gradient, okay? This is just a funny way of writing it. But the thing is that the derivative, we need to know about sine of x. We need to know about cosine of x. We need to know about, okay, I should have written it. Sine x, cosine x, um, then minus sine x and minus cosine x. So when you derivate sine, you should always remember that sine will turn to cos of x. But when you derivate cos, it will basically make a function negative, which means now it will be minus sine of x. Do you understand? Right. When you derivate minus sine x, so because it doesn't change the sign, so it will turn to cos x, cosine minus of x, cos x, the negative will still stay the same because it doesn't change that. But cosine changes to sine x, but it also changes the sign, so it will become positive. Do you understand, everyone? Now, these were the simple uh, like uh, derivations, but now let's look at other derivations. Like, for example, if they give you a function of sine ax or cosine of ax or minus sine of ax or minus co cosine of ax. So what you're going to do is, first of all, you should understand the same rules will apply. Like sine will change to cosine ax. But now, because we're derivating x, so the a inside, the constants or other variables are going to get multiplied outside. Do you guys understand this? Anyone yes, in this who doesn't understand, please let me know. Okay. Then, okay, is Rafi here? Uh, no. Wait. Wait a second, please. All right, so then in cosine x, uh, if this cosine changes to sine of ax, and then obviously a is going to multiply outside, but there is going to be a negative sign because cosine always derivates to a negative, whatever the sign may be there. And then comes uh, sine. There is... Okay, and then sine will go to cosine of ax. This will stay the same. A will come out and this will become the same negative because it doesn't change the sign. And then it will become sine of ax. A will be out and sine will be changed to positive because it changes the sign. So that's why. <clears throat> okay. Okay, now, now further, uh, further from this, let's look at some other functions. So suppose if they give you something like, okay, first let's y function and dy by dx, and now they they give you this function where it's written a sine bx, a cosine bx, negative a sine bx and negative a cosine px. Now the same things are going to apply. 
Nothing will change for anything else other than sine changing to cosine uh, and bx. And now there is a already. So now it will be a and b will b will just multiply outside. Nothing really changes. Same goes cos change to sine and becomes bx. And then it will become negative and a b like that. So this will be the same a b cosine bx and this will become positive a b sine of bx just like this everybody understands this right so b is inside the bracket it multiplies with the outside that's the only yeah, condition yeah okay. every single time and nothing okay. really changes with the other functions so you don't have to worry about them at all right okay hmm. so you can quickly copy this because this is very important in terms of when you're changing so sir things. like uh, like can we say that every time sign changes it will become cos and then every time cos changes it will be the inverse of sign yeah yeah you can say that Different. and then rest of it remains the same Okay. Yeah, yeah, that is hundred percent correct. Right. Now, uh, sir, I have a question though. Yes, please. Like uh, in the second table, the second box, um, the there's like you didn't uh, it's just like cos and sine ax, right? Uh, but then when we do the dy by dx, how is there a uh, minus a behind like? Before the sign. Uh, my uh, sorry, come again. I didn't get your question. The, in the second box, the sign ax is equal to a cos uh, ax. So where does where did the a come from before cos? Uh, that's the a inside uh, cos a that gets multiplied outside as well, like that. Is the same. So you're saying day. like. So yeah, like in the second box, the, is that uh, the reason why there's a b because a yeah. from y is getting multiplied along with b? No, a was already there. You see, a was already there, but then this b gets multiplied outside. So only the function which is inside sign gets multiplied outside. Nothing else changes in the equation. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So when exactly do we use this? In certain, qu question. certain situations. Okay, let's see. All right. Very few. All right. Now, let's look at it and let's try to understand this in a bit. Okay. So, for example, in this question that I'm going to tell you. So, in this question, it says, there is a piston in a car engine which oscillates and as you can see it can go up or down like that right while it's, while it's going up and down they say the displacement of the piston is represented by this equation do you guys understand this okay now it says where d is measured in centimeters and state the distance between the lowest position AB and the highest position of CD of the top of the piston. Now, if you look at this function, right, this is a function where you might see that because D is the displacement, right? And let's try to understand what exactly is this cause showing you? Okay, let me just show you this uh, important fact. So suppose there could be multiple things that they can give you. Like for example, if they say X is a displacement equation and they say X naught uh, and sine of theta, right? So basically what we're looking at this equation is that right now the displacement would be something like this. It will be a sine equation. And now, because theta is given by omega times t that we've learned before. So we can basically, if we build this um, 
graph with respect to time and displacement. So we should understand the equation would be x equals to x naught uh, sine of omega t. Do you guys understand this? Yeah. Now think about it this way. Now, naturally, in the same, in certain questions that this Okay, okay, you want to find the velocity equation. So what you're going to do is you should understand that velocity itself is the derivative of displacement over time. Do you guys agree with this? Yeah. So if you derivate this equation, so you should understand that now there's an x naught here, which is the maximum displacement. So this is basically x naught, right? And this omega t. So now if I derivate it, I know v is going to be, this will stay here. Omega will multiply outside. So it's going to be omega x naught, and this will change into cos, and the rest of the things will be the same. Do you guys understand this? The same rule that we have applied here. You guys agree? Now, speaking of this, then if you realize this is cos omega t, so can I? This is positive. So cos basically shows a graph like this. Understood? So we automatically know that now the velocity is a co cosine function. And if he says, all right, you need to draw. Uh, a graph like this, so you should be able to convert it back and forth. Understood? Similarly, if you realize that this particular equation also relates to acceleration with respect to time, because now we know acceleration is the derivative of velocity, because we learned acceleration is the change in velocity per unit time. All right, everyone? Okay, now, if I want to <clears throat> derivate this, how do I do this? You see, the acceleration is A. There's omega in X naught already there. Omega will multiply outside again. It will be omega square X naught. And then you realize that cos will change to sine and the rest of the function is the same, but because cos changed to sine, there is going to be a negative sign. So now, the equation, the sine function of basically uh, acceleration is going to be exactly opposite, like 180 degrees uh, phase difference of displacement. Do you guys understand this? Sir, what I'm getting is you're making derivations using the equations you gave us. So yes. A is the change of velocity over the change of time. You use the above equation, applied it into the new one, and that's how you got it, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, okay. why I haven't told you just one equation, because the reason is that this time in this question, as you can see, in this question, you might realize that this equation of displacement is with, with respect to cosine. Do you understand? Now, if I wanted to change this equation, like I want to find the velocity equation, what will I do? I will multiply this outside. What will happen? Velocity will be uh, negative 4.0 times 220 sine will change. This will 220 times t. And obviously, when sine cosine changes to sine, it also multiplies a positive a negative sign. So it's going to be positive. Do you understand? So this will be the equation for velocity for this particular question. So the velocity equation or the displacement equation can change with respect to the equation. So you should always remember how to change one from another. This is what I'm trying to tell you, okay? Right. Yes. So obviously this seems uh, a little bit complex. I do understand that. But then it solves a lot of problems that you have. Like for example, in this question, I already know if this is the displacement at time t, then the maximum displacement from this equation is 4 
uh, meters. Do you understand? Because I can see from the equation that I remember that this, this part is basically with respect to time, but this is the maximum one which is given here. Do you understand this? Yeah. Okay. Now, any questions, anybody, please let me know. All right. Okay. So, yeah, where were we now? Okay, so now, so we should understand that amplitude, like it says, uh, it's a very clever question. That's why I put it here. So it says, state the distance between the lowest point and the highest point. So the lowest point of the displacement would be this point. You guys agree? That is when it is at negative x naught, right? And the highest would be this. So this particular point, which is four, shows you the amplitude of the wave. Is that clear? Now, if I ask you, what is the amplitude? Amplitude is X naught or D right now, which is right now in this equation, it is amplitude is four. So if I say it's going, it's saying lowest and highest, it means it's talking about the distance from the highest to the lowest. So can you tell me what would be the distance between A, B, and C? Four times two is eight. So it is going to be eight centimeters. Everybody agrees? All right. So please do not write for just by looking at the equation because you just need to figure out what is the amplitude in this equation now. In, it then says determine the number of oscillations made per second by piston. If you realize this, this section of the equation tells you that this is omega. So omega right now is 220, right? Now we need to make number of oscillations per second. Number of oscillations per second basically is the frequency. So frequency is given by 2 pi f. So F is going to be 220 divided by 2 pi. Mm -hmm. So now you just simply use your calculator. You say 220 divided by 2 divided by pi. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be 35 oscillations made per second. All right, everyone. Um, Suman, Nadia, Muneeb, Satish, Javeria, Gatika. Pahar? Yes, Anush. sir. Yes, sir. Rafi, welcome back after a long time. Sorry. Yes, sir. Okay. Now it's going to be 35 oscillations per second. That's the answer. Then says on figure 3.1, draw a line to represent the top surface of the piston in the position where the speed of the piston is maximum. Now, this is a very interesting question. Now, you need to basically understand. That's what I wanted to tell you. If you notice these graphs, you will realize something that when the displacement was, when the displacement was zero, the velocity was maximum. You guys agree? Oh, yeah. And when the displacement was zero, acceleration was also zero. And that's why what the, this is what uh, uh, simple harmonic motion is, that the magnitude of displacement and acceleration are proportional. Now, look at this. When the displacement was maximum, the velocity was zero. And the acceleration was also maximum, but negative because it increases with the displacement. You guys agree? Right, sir. So now I'm just gonna write these two things here so that you guys never forget this. So when displacement is maximum, velocity V is zero. Let me write 
displacement. And acceleration is maximum, but negative. Now, when displacement x is zero, then velocity v is maximum and acceleration is also zero. Do you guys understand this? And when displacement is negative and maximum, then velocity has to be zero, but acceleration is positive maximum. So if you remember this, there's no chance you'll ever get a question wrong. Understood? Now, so speaking of this question, it says when draw a line to represent the top surface of the piston in the position where the speed of the piston is maximum. Now we realize that actually it will be at the lowest displacement here. Lowest means, uh, I mean the uh, negative value. Let's write negative max displacement. Let's suppose this is the one. And this point is going to be the maximum displacement in the positive direction. Everybody agrees to this? Right? Then, where will be the displacement zero? It will be exactly zero right in the middle. This is where the displacement has to be zero. And there, the velocity is going to be maximum. That's why we needed to draw this line. Understood? So now you can also say this is like, in this one, this is like plus four. This is like negative four. Any questions? Let me know, please. All right. Now, then it says calculate the maximum speed of the piston. Now, you remember a formula that I taught you people back in uh, circular motion and that was the tangential velocity is equal to omega x you remember this or omega r whatever you want to call it now so the formula is that the maximum velocity which is called v naught is equal to omega times the maximum displacement they're gonna say so what we're going to do is we want to find the maximum velocity. We want to multiply the omega, which is 220, with the maximum displacement, which was 4 centimeters. Because here it is centimeters, so I'm just going to multiply 4 directly. And it is going to be 220 times 4 and 880. So that's going to be 880. All right. Just a second, please. Okay, next time I'm not going to use this app. Which side this is? Okay, so 880 centimeters per second. All right, Bahar, do you understand this, uh, Anusha? And Emmet? Yes, sir. Tatish, yeah. Nadi, Saman, everything is clear? Yes, okay. sir. Good. Now, it says the engine of the car has several cylinders. Three of these cylinders are shown in figure like this. Okay. X is the same cylinder as the piston as shown in as in figure 3.1 that we saw earlier. Y is here two further cylinders with the lowest and highest positions. Uh, the pistons in the cylinders have the same frequency, but they are not in phase. Fine. At oh, a sure. point, yes. So yes, the previous man. question, I just wanted to ask, you just take whatever we have and then multiply it by the displacement, right? No, or no. Distance travel, sorry. No, no, no. Basically, this equation 
if you remember circular motion, we learned an equation uh, V is equal to R W. You remember this? Yeah. Basically, this is the same equation where if you want to find the maximum velocity, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply the angular speed with maximum displacement. That's what you're going to do. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I've done. All right. Now, in this, it did not in pitch. It says at a particular instant in time, the position on the top of the piston in cylinder X is shown. Okay. In cylinder Y, the oscillation of piston lead those lead those by piston by a phase angle of 120 degrees. Do you guys understand this? Right. Then it says, um, complete the diagram for cylinder Y for this instant by drawing a line to show the top surface of the piston. So we need to show where the top of the piston in Y is, which is 120 degrees ahead of this. All right. Is that clear, everybody? Do you understand the question, please? Sir, I still don't. Okay. Now, again, right now, it's saying that this piston is right here. But the next piston, which is basically has the same angular speed, basically they uh, oscillate at the same frequency. It's saying the Y is 120 degrees ahead of it. Like it's different from there. Understood? Yeah. Now we need to understand we need to make the piston where it might be right now with respect to AB. Understood? Right. Okay. Now, so speaking of this then, what you're going to do is you need to understand that equation that we have, right? The, the, the equation we have is D equals to minus 4.0 and if you look at the equations, cosine 220t, right? You guys agree? Yes. Now, going back, this whole thing that you see right now is basically equal to omega t, remember? And omega t is equal to theta. Mm -hmm. Understood? Now, they say it is leading by 120. If I write this as minus 4.0 cosine of 120, would you mind? No, sir. You're correct. No, sir. Okay. So then let's try and do this. Minus 4.0 times cosine of 120, 120. So what you're going to get, it is basically... Two. Two, yeah, two. It says it is at a displacement of two centimeters, right? Above this position, understood? Right. So, all right. And similarly, it says that arrow to show the direction of movement, a line to show the top surface of this. Okay. So speaking of uh, this, then think about this. If this line, exactly this whole line was what? Eight centimeter. We got it previously, right? Yeah. Okay. Which basically means that this piston should be uh, about uh, with respect to the displacement, like displacement it is right in the middle, right? Right in the middle, like this, okay. Which is, uh, yeah, which is basically three centimeters, uh, sorry, four centimeters from here and four centimeters from here, right? Okay. All right, so it is leading by two pi 
ویٹ پلیز ہولڈ آن ون سیکنڈ آئی بی بیک ون منٹ ایکچولی All right, I'm back. All right, so from here. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna make, you're gonna basically draw, uh, you're gonna use your ruler and measure two centimeter on this and draw a line where it will be. All right, is that clear everybody? From here, just take your ruler like that. Then it says an arrow then it says an arrow uh, to show the direction of movement of the yes yes Manu. you are getting two different values when you put two over three pi and when you put one uh, if you put two by three pi uh, rad you have you have to turn it into radians then you yeah. show that too i tried it on the calculator just now yeah in radians oh, you have okay. to, you have to use yeah, pi you have to, the, you have to use that yeah that's fine oh, okay. right. yeah. then say an arrow to show the direction of movement of the piston where where do i show that in cylinder y an arrow to show so the the arrow to show the direction obviously if it is leading leading means it is like it will now go above and it will come here so your arrow should be like this do you understand so this let me just remove this this part of the equation should be two centimeters and then the arrow of the movement should be here is that clear everyone 
and probably i did not basically paste the whole question there should be like something about this as well i'm sorry about that but you should you know check this out when you um, uh, go over it again and you should draw it uh, yourself probably they will give you another phase difference in part two of this question i don't know why i didn't do this anyway any sorry. question yes so why does the answer say line drawn three centimeter above ab okay um Gautika, for that, unfortunately, um, uh, this is why you should not follow the mark scheme. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you why. Actually, uh, in the actual exam, basically, uh, when students were doing this, all right, so when they like this. This whole thing was basically uh, one centimeter was on the scale of two centimeter, like that. Do you understand? Something like that. Okay, in the actual exam. So when you had to measure it in the actual exam, you had to draw it according to that scale. Because in the scale, this wasn't actually eight centimeter. This was something else. Do you understand, Gartika? So it's we supposed to draw it uh, according to the proper measurement? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they say draw the line, right? Okay. In this exam, all right, in this exam, basically this was not eight centimeter in the actual exam because of the scale, this was some other value. Do you understand? Like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. So when the students basically had to draw two centimeter, which was actually three centimeter on the scale. That's why it was written in the mark scene, but it, it has nothing to do with the actual answer. That's okay, why. Okay, sir. Okay. So, so the mark scenes are for examiners only. That's why. Okay, um, Gatika. I have a question, you... please. Sorry? I have a question, please. Yes, come again. Yes, sir. Sure. So the mean position, is it the green line in between? Yes, yes, that's right. So why are we making the two centimeters from the bottom? Uh, because it says this is the position of A, B is right now here, right? Yes. If I say the other piston is leading, leading means it's ahead of this position. Do you understand? Okay, yeah. So how much ahead it is? It is two centimeters ahead of it. Do you understand? Like that? Got it. So we have to make two centimeters from this line. I just made it for reference, just to show that, okay, this is two centimeters, something like that. It should be like, you're right, it should be somewhere here in the actual way, in the actual sense, you should be right. Like I drew it carelessly. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So okay. why did you put 120 in the bracket instead of 220T? Because I said, the bracket tells you about omega times time, right? Which is Gautika also equal to the angle because omega t is equal to the angular displacement. Remember? That's why. Okay. Yeah. That's why if you put the angle, you get the answer as well. Understood? And the angle is the one which is given in the question. Yes, yes, of course. Okay. But you need to make sure that if you're using 120, you put your calculator in degrees. If you're using, what was that? Uh, two by three pi, then you have to use radians to get the answer. Otherwise, it will be wrong. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is one of the most difficult questions that basically came across. So uh, I hope you guys understand what is the use of these equations when they come up. And sometimes it's this. So, sir, that, does that mean like in the if they ask to draw the uh, uh, like the position of the piston in uh, z, so we'll just add another two, so that will become four centimeter. Probably, if they say, maybe they might say it might be uh, you know at some other position, so you have to add another angle for that. I don't exactly know. All right, you can check with the question paper. What was the full question? Okay. Probably it, it is my mistake that I cut it short. Understood? No, sir. I'm just asking generally, like if they continue to ask to draw the position of, uh, of the piston in Z, cylinder okay. Z. So assuming the same question and same method, can we say it's like four centimeter? That's how it will go? 
if it is 120 degrees ahead of uh, y, yes, that's right. It would be like that. Okay. But I don't know the exact question. Okay, so you can question check. The question says 240 degrees. 240 degrees? Okay, yeah. then you can just add uh, 240. Right? I think four, four centimeters less. If you say cosine of 220 degrees. 240. 240. Okay. The question was 240. Fine. Let's do that. So if it was 240, then it's going to be 4. Sir, uh, 4 centimeter will come, I think. It will be 4? Yes, be because 120, 120 is 2, so 240 will become 4. Yeah, yeah. No, that would be right. Then. Okay. So minus 4 cos 240 is 2. Minus 4 uh, cos 240 is 2. Yeah. Okay, then it would be like, it's the same. Like you then have to draw the same uh, line, but then you also need to remember that where, where, wherever that line is. Okay, got go. So if it's 2, so it is only possible. Is it uh, telling us it is leading or lagging? It should be leading, right? From here as well. So it says it leads those in cylinder X by a phase angle of 240 degree. Yeah, so you can make the same line, then it would be the same line as this. What's the difference? The difference is that uh, it would be coming back from that position then. That's the difference. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand? So it was going up. So at 120 degrees, it was going up. So at 240, it would be coming back from that position. Understood? Sir, but uh, I like since they said 240, can't we just go like the ratio method? Like mm -hmm. since 120 is giving you two centimeters, so two double it will give you four, and then like no, uh, no, because uh, I want to tell you that when you're looking oscillation, right, you have to think like uh, them as a circle. Okay, so suppose if you have gone like um. Uh, 120 degrees, like if you go from this point to 120 degrees, when you go to 240 degrees, you go at the back, not at the front. Do you understand? Like that. So suppose oh, oh, with, so... if with respect to this, if this angle is 120, you go back to 120, it will lead you to the other position, not the first position. Yes. Anything else? No, sir. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yes, sir. I do. In a cosine function, it goes up, down, up, down. It doesn't go forward. So that's why. That's why you might get. You know, mm -hmm. you can't apply the ratio here. Cosine is not a ratio. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Very nice. I hope everybody understands this. Now let's go to the next question. In this question, it says the tube area of cross section A is given to you where they have shown h as the height which is under the something like probably some liquid or whatever hello what's up what's up yaar uska number nahi hai mere paas tum khud wahan chale jao theek hai aur chill karo number nahi hai नहीं वो नहीं उठाएंगे तुम चले जाओ फोर्थ फ्लोर पे हाँ हाँ बस उसी को कहना वो दे देंगे दस पांच हाँ कितना रश नहीं ओके अलाव दस ऑल राइट नाउ तो इन दिस क्वेश्चन सेज दे हैव गिवन अ ग्राफ कैन समबडी टेल मी व्हाट काइंड ऑफ ग्राफ इज दिस इज दिस कोसाइन ग्राफ और अ साइन ग्राफ no, it is a cosine graph because at sine, sine starts from sine starts from it's zero when it's zero. Do you understand? Sine is like this and cosine is like that. Okay, Satish. Okay. Now the next thing you should always check is what is the equilibrium line? So equilibrium line, if the minimum displacement here is two and the maximum is six, so it means the equilibrium line lies right in the middle. All right, everybody. Now, mm -hmm. so then it says, what is the amplitude in meters? So amplitude in meters means that this would be the amplitude. You guys agree? 
So this is going to be two centimeters, which is basically 0 0.20 meters. You guys get my point? 0 0.02. 0 0.02, right? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, 0 0.020, right? Is that clear now? All right. Then going to the next part, it says the frequency of oscillation. So how do you find the frequency from this? You see, this is a crest and this is a crest. So you basically go from here and here, what is the time period of the wave? That's basically 0 0.6 seconds. So how do you, how do you find frequency? Frequency is oh, one no, upon five. Yeah, it's very good. So that's, uh, what is the answer please? Can, could you please tell me? 1.67 Hertz. 1.67 Hertz, excellent. And it says the acceleration of the tube when H is the maximum. Okay, fair enough. So acceleration is given by minus omega squared and x. So now acceleration we want to find minus omega is 2 pi by f whole square times the maximum displacement was 0 0.020. Everybody agrees? Now let's put in the values. 2 pi f is 1.67 and then whole squared multiplied by 0 0.02. Could you please... Uh, could you please uh, find the answer? Minus 2.20. Minus 2.20. Excellent. So 2.20. 2.20. Excellent. All right. Any questions now? Anyone who still has a doubt in this? So this is like uh, pretty simple now. Then it says the frequency of oscillation of the tube is given by the expression, as you can see, where G is the acceleration freefall, calculate the density of the liquid in which the tube is floating. Interesting. Hmm. How do we do this? First, we wow. have to make density be the subject, right? No. Uh, no. Yeah. We have we can. I mean, obviously, we can definitely do that. But um do we have the mass? That's what I want to see. Did they give mass? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. 0 0.23 and 24 centimeter cube is the... Remember this. Okay, please. All right. So what you're going to do is uh, the frequency is 1.67 according to Gatika. So if there's something wrong, blame her. And 1 upon 2 pi. And then under root. And then A was... What was A? Uh, 23. 24. 24. So 24 centimeter cube, how do we change this? So we should remember that one centimeter has um, basically 10 raised to power minus two meters. You guys agree? So if you square on both sides, then it's going to be one centimeter square will be 10 raised to a minus four meter square. Agree? Now just replace this here. So it will be 24 times 10 raised to a minus four meter square. Understood? Now, let's put in. Yes, sir. 24 times 10 raised to our minus 4 and multiplied by rho times 9.81 divided by mass was 0 0.23, I believe, right? And now you can solve this. So you can take the square, you can multiply here and there. Could you please tell me the answer? So where did you get uh, 24 from? It's uh, written in the question here. Uh, the area is 24 centimeter cube. Oh, okay. Did right. you print the PDF? I'm sure you haven't printed yeah. the PDF. No, no, I haven't printed it. Okay. All right, good. Hmm. What was the answer then? Hurry up, please. It's one zero seven five. One one zero seven five. Perfect. So right. we can write it as one zero eight zero. All right. Is that clear, everyone? Any questions now? 
So okay. is so it fine like, if we write it... in the significant figures, like 1.1 1. 1 into 10 raised to 3? Yeah, you could okay. do that. That's also correct. One zero eight is also correct. Okay, but sir, one... uh, yeah. So like, if we make the row the subject and then we do the substitution, does it carry like a mark? No, it doesn't carry any mark. So one mark is uh, writing the correct values, and the other mark is for writing the correct answer. That's all you get. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now. The thing is that if you have written this answer, this would not be accepted because it is more than the significant figures they have given to you. So you can only write one more than that, not more, like not more than basically one more. Do you understand or not less? So if somebody has written one or 1.075, both are wrong. Do you understand this? Please be very careful about that because each question, they might cut one mark. So then obviously if there are 13 questions, you lose 13 marks for nothing. And that's not good. Is it clear? All right. Now, then it says the oscillations illustrated in three are undamped. Undamped means that they are basically, um, they're at 100% energy. Okay, so in short. And says in uh, in practice, liquid does cause light damping. Though we're going to study this, but right now I'm just going to solve this to complete it. So uh, it says show the damping from 1.4. So damping basically is like slowly the amplitude is decreases, uh, the frequency never changes, and you just need to show the gradual decrease in amplitude. So because you might have done this chapter already, so I just wanted to make sure that you know this. All right, is that clear, everyone? So uh, just yes, sir. when showing damping, do not change frequency. All right, that's very important. Otherwise the question will go wrong. Okay, understood. All right. Uh, sir, so, uh, like, uh, hmm. sir, uh, amplitude, we have to find from the, uh, uh okay nothing nothing middle from the maximums and this is just like the previous question okay yes sir i i understood yeah all right i do understand that you guys have chemistry class and the chemistry teacher is going to be very very angry at me but oh sir yes the amplitude of the damped uh graph which we draw we can choose it right yeah obviously okay. obviously it should show uh, like it should be visible to a naked eye that you're decreasing the amplitude gradually in light damping. That's what you should do. Okay, Mani? Okay. All right. So 